Hi everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another card video. Today I'm using the Birthday Balloon stamp set and another stamp set you'll see in a bit to create a couple of really fun cards using Distress Oxide ink stamping on colored cardstock. I'm gonna be adding a lot of gold accents to these cards to really make them pop. I'm using a grid transparency sheet to get this greeting position just perfectly inside my Misty stamp positioning tool. And then I'm stamping in Versamark ink onto some mushroom cardstock from Concord and Ninth. So I'm gonna be heat embossing this with some gold embossing powder. My gold emboss embossing powder is Gilded, the color Gilded from Brutus Monroe. And I'll apply that and tap off the excess and then hit that with my heat tool. So now I'm going to do a bunch of stamping with oxide inks. I've got worn lipstick, mustard seed, cracked pistachio, and wilted violet. And I'm stamping the two balloon images from that uh, stamp set. And I'm going to kind of vary where the balloons are located, move them around, make sure I don't have any colors of the same balloon next to each other. And I'm also sort of thinking in my mind, these balloons will have strings hanging from them. So I want to give a little bit of space beneath each balloon so that I can have a string hanging down. I also think it would be fun to add in a white pigment ink. Um, if Tim's out there listening, Tim, I would love a white oxide just to go along with all of these. But um, I think you could also add a white pigment ink to this as well. So the reason why the oxide inks uh, cover this colored cardstock so well is because they're a little bit of a hybrid ink. You've got the water reactive properties of regular distress ink, but you also have a little bit of the pigment ink qualities, meaning that it's more opaque, um, has a little bit of a matte look to it, matte texture, and it coats over colored things really, really well. Um, so I'm going to be doing it on two different card examples for today. You'll be able to see how it looks on different colors of cardstock. So I'm finishing out stamping these balloons just in the corners. On some of the balloons, the center area wasn't stamping very well, so I would just dab my finger in the ink and apply it to the center of the balloon and sort of get that to sort of blend in a little bit. So at first I thought I wanted some black strings on the balloon, so I drew those in really quickly. Eventually, I will paint gold over them. Now off to the side, I've got my Fine Tech uh, Metallic Pearlescent Paints palette, and I'm using just the gold shade to color on some polka dots and stripes and different elements on the balloons, as well as outline the balloons a little bit. And I also drew in some stars to kind of fill in the gaps. This almost makes the balloons look like they were hand-drawn instead of stamped and it just gives it a really fun, festive look. I think this happy birthday card turned out beautifully, especially because of the gold accents that I added on here at the end. I love the big polka dots and the little stripes and the little dots. I think it turned out really well um, to have the patterns on all of these balloons. So here's where I decided to add in the gold strings. I decided the black strings kind of got lost um, so I just went over that with a little bit of that gold paint and a very small brush. So here's the basic card design. I will put it on a card base at the end of the video. So moving on to my other card, I'm now using some evergreen cardstock from Concord and Ninth and the Thanks and Leaves stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. I'm once again using that grid transparency sheet to position my greeting on the center of my card front. And then I can put it on the door of my Misty, take off that grid transparency sheet, and then stamp. Once again, I'm stamping in Versamark ink. I'll be applying that same gold embossing powder to this very large greeting. This is one of my most favorite greetings I've ever done for a stamp set. Um, I really, really love that stamp set, and I keep going back to it, even though it's a few years old. I hit that with my heat tool until it was smooth and melted, melted all of that embossing powder. And then I went straight into the stamping. I'm now using mowed lawn and just one of the leaf stems from the stamp set. So this is going to give me a real tone on tone effect, um, a, a very bright green on top of this darker intense green. And it gives, it almost looks like 
wallpaper to me, having this kind of tone on tone effect that looks really, really neat. So I'm stamping around, going all the way around the greeting, making sure it's right up next to it, and then filling in some of those gaps in the corners and whatnot. I then grabbed my gold paint palette again and um, came in with a very, very thin brush and just added a border around the outer edge. You could also do this with the Simusus Stamp Thin Border Frames, or I think that's what it's called. Um, you could do that and just paint the cardstock after your frame has been cut. So I decided to put these onto some card fronts here. These are side folding A2 cards, and they were almost perfectly sized. They were just a little bit short. It's just human error when you cut your cardstock. So after I had them adhered, I used a ruler. This is one of the Cuddleline rulers from My Sweet Petunia and a Tim Holt craft knife just to lop off the ends of the cards that weren't quite the right size. And those are my two cards for today. Just some really fun ideas for what to do with your Distress Oxide inks on top of solid colored cardstock. I think this is a really fun technique. You could try it with a bunch of different stamps. I think um, pumpkins on orange cardstock for Halloween would be really, really cute. Or ornaments on red cardstock for Christmas. The possibilities are endless. Thanks so much for watching today. I will be back very soon with another card video. Thank you.